Alrighty, the doors are open, let's go in. Oh, look at that, I'm getting a reflection off the camera from the sunshine. So, this is the Watertone Workshop, brand new, and not quite set up. I'll close the door behind us here, so we can start on the clamp rack. A bad copy of Jay Bates' design, he's on YouTube, made out of worse material and put together in a hurry to get things out of the way. Look at that beauty. Isn't that nice? Like a hockey stick. Pipe clamps, smaller clamps, really smaller clamps, great big clothespins. They come in handy. You need light clamping? Uh, over here, broom, dustpan, lights, extension cord, air hose, temporary storage for the ladder. Like I said, everything's temporary. Oh, uh, pry bars. Up on this wall, coming around the corner, we've got the big hammers. My dad's level, an old oil can, the pencil sharpener, a bunch of tools that I like to keep on hand. And the levels around the side there. And it's along with a large straight edge. Uh, various saws and squares and yada yada and a well it's not a black and decker workmate it's a cheap job site knockoff of it the toolbox the main toolbox uh, junk in the top tape measures fret rocker a capo for some reason peeler gauges uh, chisels and punches uh, little magnetic picky up things and can openers and precision screwdrivers and I don't know why I have that many knives but I do. One of those things that you lose and then when you go buy a new one then you find the one that you lost. Safety glasses. Uh, all kinds of pliers and vice grips and stuff like that. Uh, all my files. As you can see my files are in sheaths and all I do with that to make it is take a green painter's tape, wrap it backwards around it and then put some duct tape over top of that. Protects all the edges. Card scraper. My files. Uh, jigs for doing sharpening saws. Uh, what do we got down here? We have got computer tools and electronic water level and uh, exacto knives and stud sensors and my digital voltmeter, digital multimeter, and soldering iron, yeah, a spark tester for cars. I used to be a mechanic at one point until they got all computerized. Uh, some sockets, snap-on craftsman metric set, some what's that? Photo, and another snap-on whole bunch of Allen keys, sets, and junk, mostly tape and wire and string and adhesives and chalk line stuff and clean your glasses and bits of rope and a really bad multi-tool and a mini cutter for tubing, all kinds of crap like that. And in the bottom there is more junk. Just some stuff for air hoses, and I don't know what's in that box. Probably guitar stuff. Uh, a record, roller stand. I don't really like this thing the way it is. They seem to... i get the garbage can out of the way here. They seem to always pull what you want on, as an outfeed to one side or another. If it's not dead straight. If it's off this way, it pulls the wood that way, and if it's off that way, it pulls the wood that way, and it just sucks. So I just built a little, let me get this out of the way here, built myself a little piece of plywood, a couple of little pieces of plywood on it, and now I've got a really nice tilting off cut stand. Board comes and just tips it right up flat, knock it back down, and Bob's your uncle. And that just kind of sits in here. Oh, my favorite pencil. The table saw. Uh, 1987 Craftsman with a direct drive motor. The blades 
go right onto the shaft of the motor. And I built the cart, and that's in my blog. And I've got my miter sled sits there. Uh, inserts, zero clearance inserts, and all my blades are in here. And you can see the angle here, and I'll show you that. why is that later. And tools for the table saw, push sticks, and screwdrivers, nuts and bolts, and micro jig uh, splitter, and push pads. Down below the standard miter fence. And what else do I got in here? I've got a universal guide for making tenons that I've never used. And my box joint jig that I built. And I think that was a shop notes plan. And it's nicely adjustable and works pretty good. My cross cut sled. I should have brought the tripod out here. My homemade fence. That is a piece of aluminum extrusion and angle iron. And you can see I've got adjustments here for the tip tilt on it and an adjustment here for side to side. And the secret to this is, let's see if I can get you right in there. This little aluminum piece right here, you can see how it comes around the front of the angle iron. But it's also machined so that it fits into the slots of the extrusion. So it keeps it perfectly where I want it. You can see I got a little shim right in there. So it holds it right exactly where it wants to be. And the locking mechanism is just a cam clamp. And if I put it on the saw, this goes over a piece of square tubing. And that's mounted on an angle iron and raised up a little bit on some washers. You can see the angle iron, uh, the square tubing is tapped right in there. And this little thing is not attached to anything but here because the force goes that way. And it just clamps right down with some effort. A little bit tight there, but it does not move at all. Uh, my ginormous crosscut sled. I needed one in a hurry. It's just a piece of ash, some really thin plywood, and a runner. And it's just a, goes on the one side, over here. Pencil's in the way, but so I won't put it right all the way in. And uh, it cuts square. <laughs> What do you want, you know? It works really nice. The reason why I went with such thin wood is because of the fall off. I don't like them falling off three quarters of an inch. And so I use just the thin plywood and it seems to have enough rigidity this way that it holds everything in shape. And sacrificial fence for the table saw. You can see for making rabbit joints there. And it just has Little things that go into the uh, into the uh, extrusion on the table, so everything kind of fits up here. Again, I don't know how everybody does this with just one hand. So that little cutoff down there. If I swing the table saw out, yes, it's on wheels. It's very nice. I like that. Like that. Locking casters, uh, just a piece of crap that I put as an outfeed table here, and that's the stick to hold it up. Just a minute, I'll get that in place. Uh, maybe I should have brought the tripod out, but that uh, just, just props in there. And then on the bottom, this is above the is the dust chute, and I can hook a vacuum up to that or whatever. Never have yet. But that's the dust chute for the table saw, and it's just a piece of tin and a couple of little slots in there. And reinforced with a couple of little thin strips. And, you know, quick and dirty, but it works. And that's the marvelous table saw. The price was right. I got it from my dad, who owned it for many years. Oh, my new windows will let some air come in here. Oh, look at that. We got a little 
visitor right there. Oh, that belonged to my stepson. So he's always with me now. At least in spirit. I'll get that window open. Uh, saws. We'll get over to some saws here. My little hand tool board, which I really like. It's coming along nicely. Again, everything's temporary, so it can be moved around. I got that saw is a warranted superior. And that saw, which is a warranted superior. And that's like an everyday saw. Those actually aren't too bad, despite them being this induction hardened. You can see the... I don't know if I can get on that. But you can see the blue teeth on it, they're induction hardened, so they can't be sharpened. But it's not a bad little saw. And that's a Diston. And another Diston. And they're not particularly old. They've got the aluminum on it. And these two are filed cross cut. And these two are filed grip. They've been converted and uh, not finding I got them a little fine. I think they're about seven tooth per inch. And those four saws cost me two dollars at a yard sale. So I'm not complaining. Good to experiment on. Uh, what do we got? Of course the bench brush. Some figuring out. Uh, the square that I made and another square that I made that are on the blog. A terrible square. Uh, Simona Compass, uh, another old square that I picked up a yard, at a yard sale. My mallet that I made out of a branch that size and a branch that size in birch with a fox wedge tenon. A uh, chunk of wax, winding sticks live behind here. Oh, wax, there goes the wax. My beater chisels, I gotta make a new handle. Uh, some Japanese made Mastercraft chisel. Mastercraft is a Canadian tire brand but uh, they seem to be nice steel. And my collection of Narex chisels that the missus got for me for Christmas. Uh, number seven Sweetheart. The number six that's a Stanley. The number five is is it a Stanley? The number four is a Bailey or no a record I'm sorry. And the number three is a Stanley. And I bought that one, all those, together for $115. And I got a marking gauge too. Uh, this one come from my niece and her husband. And that one came from my daughter. And uh, a Stanley 192 shoulder plane, which is kind of a bear to set up. But once it gets going, it's not too bad. I like to keep them nice and sharp. And that has a home up there. Uh, an old tack hammer that belonged to my mom. She passed away last year. And uh, I bought that and that. The brace and the dr drill handle from that same old guy that I buy tools off of. The plain guy. And a couple of spoke shaves. And a portable scaffolding. The big shop vacuum sits here, six and a half horsepower. Can you see that? Six and a half horsepower with 115 volts? I don't think so. That's blatant advertising. Just marketing BS. 745 watts approximately for a horsepower, so figure out the math at 120 volts. Uh, temporary storage for sheet goods. Again, temporary, 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 all in this corner. And I've just got a little cleat up there that holds them kind of vertical. Some old insulation and house wrap from the building. This is all stuff left over from building the shop. And this corner eventually, let me step back because we're back. We've gone down a whole wall now. That corner with that shelf on it, I want to build a very large cabinet in there. In this corner right here that will replace that shelf. And it is going to hold a tote about that big on the bottom 
that houses the pool. And one of those is full of all kinds, well, the, boat, the upper one is too, filled with stuff. We'll get to that. So, a big cabinet here to hold all that, including all of the hand power tools. What do we got here? Yeah, some sandpaper, the Craftsman Super Rotor in the table that I don't use very often. Uh, that I will get to later. We'll stick with a couple of dowels in it. We will get to it. Uh, just a template for boring dog holes. Uh, old bits that need looking after. This is a planing stop. And that is what that's for. That tells me where to bore the holes in the bench. So the planing stop just pops in through the holes. And does its job. <laughs> and that lives up there. Uh, what else do we got? Sharpening stuff. A uh, holder bench hook to hold the stone, my water stone. That's just um, one from Lee Valley, comes with the kit. I've got a, for rougher, roughing out, I've got an old oil stone and I don't even know what the grits are. Uh, coarse on one side and medium on the other. But it removes metal in a hurry. The Veritas Mark II honing guide, and that's what the stone came with, so if that's a kit, it goes up to 4,000 grit, I think, which does a fairly decent job. A uh, water bottle, oil bottle, uh, a couple of bench hooks inspired by Roy Underhill, made out of some ash, and there's two of them. And another bench hook with a little adjustable stop on it so I can make sure it's square and it's seen a it's fair share of abuse. And what do we got? The staple gun, the framing nailer. Oh, did I miss something? Oh yeah, the Makita belt sander. The new skill saw. The old skill saw. The 18 gauge pin nailer made by Performax. Piece of crap. Uh, the DeWalt 5-inch random orbital sander, painting supplies, what have we got in here? Heat gun, we've got uh, another detail sander in there. Uh, the Milwaukee 4.5-inch grinder, the corded drill, electric staple gun, uh, rivet tool, floor jack, paint that I was using on the shed, uh, a box of chain in there. Just stuff that's stowed away for now. Uh, the bench. The bench has a vise that I put on it. A couple of pieces of old belt when I got too fat for them. Glued on there and a piece of ash for the front. And I use that against the planing stop that I mentioned before. And it seems to look pretty good. It's a quick release. It's not the, the most thing, the most durable thing in the world, but it does what it's supposed to do. It holds stuff. What else do you want from a vise? Uh, this is actually an industrial sewing table that came from a factory. And my little stool lives under there. A bucket full of stuff, the grease gun uh, extensions for the um, pipe clamps, vacuuming stuff, and the little shop rack. Yeah, there's some tile hidden back there that we got at a yard sale and my jack stands uh, back up to the top of the bench. Uh, made by Rona or labeled by Rona. I don't know who made it. It's just a knockoff of somebody else's. Uh, I don't know how long that's going to last. I had some blue smoke come out of that. Oh, look at that, the river. <laughs> uh, another toolbox. Oh, a thinner planing stop. Uh, computer speakers. The clock from my dad. The three of us kids went together and bought that for him for Christmas one year and he's since passed it on to me. He's still kicking, which is nice. Uh, the subwoofer. Uh, Ooh, sorry about your ears. Uh, more bits for the brace. Uh, centering bits in here, which are pretty cool and really like those. Uh, more centering bits, twist bits. Uh, spoon bits, uh, chamfers, 
and a couple of different flavors. So those are all my brace and bits. I got a almost a complete set there. I've got them green tape with numbers on them for how many sixteenths they are. Uh, an overflow of screwdrivers, Torx heads, and repeatables that I've got. And more braces and bits. And more braces and bits. Or bits for the brace, sorry. Uh, sure foam guides. Uh, four in one rasps. More sure foam guides. And wrenches. And wrenches and wrenches and wrenches and wrenches. And that's that one. Okay, you stay up there. Uh, storage. That's all supposed to be in cord goods. Great big thing of cord that I rope that I bought one day. I needed 30 feet and it was cheaper to buy the whole roll. So I've got tons of rope. Uh, and that's all going in that cabinet that I want to build. I want to build another cabinet over here too with drawers in the bottom for all of the tools, hand tools. Uh, what have we got here? Junk. More junk. Uh, paperwork. Uh, all kinds of little hardware goodies. I got little brushes in there and more hardware goodies and dowels and plugs and screws and driver bits and pencils and a little organizer full of stuff. And go a shelf down and we got screws and we got miscellaneous screws and these are all in packages. Uh, for drywall bolts and in the back and nails are over on this side and all kinds of different nails and my air tool stuff and down here more nails way back there in here is more nails I'm not getting very much light this white box is and the box below it is like deck screws and stuff and my caulking guns sit down there and more screws and a whole bunch of little leftover cut off pieces of walnut are sitting in here and finishing supplies and a crowded little corner and there's a little cabinet down there the car wash stuff which has not found a, a home yet really uh, let's go back up to the top I got there that's the brand you want to avoid and not well made but you know when you don't have anything any port in a storm. My Delta scroll saw that I've never bought a blade for yet and never used. Uh, some hand soap. Oh, well, one thing that it is good for, I gotta say, is for when I gotta have the place for my mosquito coils. A drill press does an excellent job of holding mosquito coils up. And below that, we've got all the drill bits and drill indexes and taps and dies and a chainsaw oiler and spade bits and. Down below I've got Varsol and Floatrol stuff and the curfing plane that I'm working on that will get there eventually. Ugh, what else do we got? All the electrical stuff for the shop. This is all electronic stuff. That's the breaker panel and I got the boxes in here. This is a box I made years and years ago labeled camp gear but it's not camp gear. Uh, the cooler. And all that's got to go into that cabinet that's going to go way over in that corner too. The squirrel cage fan and light bulbs and bits and pieces and a tile cutter and stuff for the car for winter and extra, uh, light bulbs are there. I got all kinds of have come right around. I got all kinds of little cut off pieces and shorts and pine and ash and moldings that I've made. Uh, get over to this side back over here give you a little bit wider view and I've got a miter saw it's just a miter master craft and it doesn't sit up there very well but it comes down when on on its stand for serious cutting the uh, stand is a wolf craft which works decent enough uh, what do we got tree wax clear paste wax with natural carnauba I use that for the table saw and rust prevention. I've got latex gloves and stuff for the router and blades and more paint and more paint and more paint and 
just all kinds of yard stuff. Uh, tubing for the water level. This side, glues and oils and all kinds of stuff like that. Little scraps of sandpaper and uh, my little grinder that clamps on, hand grinder. Uh, an extra brace, adhesive, uh, ball peen hammer. Down here is the electric grinder and the vise, the metalworking vise, and you can see the little bases that they are on. And I've got them. So I just come over to the main vise. And I either clamp what I need, the vise, or the grinder just fits right into that vise. It makes a good sturdy work surface. Uh, the table's actually screwed to the wall. It's not extra heavy duty or anything. Well, I guess it is with the steel, but it's just not heavy heavy enough to stay in place, so it's screwed to the wall with some brackets. And that's that cabinet, and again, that stuff will all be going into those corner cabinets. Uh, sawdust. The well, my own design of a saw bench. So this bench, that piece that I was talking to you about before, if I want to, it just pops right into the hole like that. And I got a, a stop. Instead of using a bench hook, it's got one built in. And the other thing that's really nice about those is those are three quarter inch holes. So if I come over to the clamp rack, and if I want to hold anything in place for sawing, the hold fast holds it right in there. Actually, we got to do it this way. I'm going to show it. Watch your ears. And that holds that in there nice for that saw bench. Like I said, that one's my own design. And that was made out of construction grade stuff. And it's all just two by fours. And then I built the one from Billy'sWorkbench.com. He has a PDF of it, and he's got SketchUp plans for it, and videos on it. And it is a fantastic little bench. I'm telling you, this is the thing that I use every time I'm woodworking. Every time. That is a great thing, Billy's Little Bench on YouTube. And it is a fantastic design. Yeah, construction material and some pine. Uh, an old Rockwell four inch jointer. That has been neglected and it's got rust in it, so that's gotta become upcoming for some maintenance and stuff. But it's not a bad little, it does what it's supposed to do. I picked it up cheap. Modified it a little bit. It needs some attention again. It sat in the tent and got rusty and everything the Makita Thickness planer 12 inch 300 millimeter planer and it's really Different in that this bed goes up and down and the motor stays stationary And it hasn't been used in so long. It's got cobwebs on it and I put that on a little cart so I can move it around and it's just a couple of screws holding that on there. So if I need to move anything heavy, I just pull the cart off of the, or the uh, cart out from underneath it. Just unscrew it and bring the cart out. And that moves around, which is also handy for the, the old wheelchair ramp. I can go bring anything out there. Uh, in the back here, I got some more old pine and old building materials and construction materials. I have a little ma uh, Moto Master Canadian Tire double lung compressor, and it does an adequate job. Something I threw together for temporary lighting. And that's just a drop light, just screwed onto a stick. Doesn't get any any simpler than that. Uh, in here, I got some blocks of maple that I've salvaged from the wood pile and some maple here and there's a piece of maple that was it's actually meant to be I made my squares out of that one 
It's actually for a fretboard on a guitar. I don't know if that figure will show up in there very well. Look at that. Nice piece of quarter saw and maple. Will it focus? But and what else do I got? Some ash from an ash tree that I cut down years and years ago. This is what I used for my guitar build and pieces of ash and cutoffs and down below I got some gluing calls and shims and cutoffs of plywood and uh, the light switch. And there we go. That is the whole thing in a nutshell. I hope that didn't take too long. I'll give you another little tour around here. Now that I've got things pulled out in a mess, <laughs> like I'm going to use it. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Uh, please like and subscribe. Boy, us YouTube guys that are just starting out like me, uh, we don't know what we're doing, but we know that likes and subscribes and comments really help the cause a little bit. So, if you can do any of those, thumbs up. Thumbs ups are great. We all live for those. Oh, did you want to see the... Uh, my workbench is eventually going to be here, and that's the river right through there. And so I'm going to stand right here. And this is what I'm going to look at while I'm working. Those trees will eventually get a little bit taller and clearer out at the bottom. So I'll be able to sit here, and in the winter time, of course, there won't be any leaves blocking the view. So yeah, a nice little cozy place to uh, to work. The sun's really hitting that window now. Oh, one other thing I added. I put a plug-in up there on the lights. Those three lights with two tubes in each, they suck less than two amps. So I've got lots of lots of capacity for something. So I put a plug in there. The brown cord goes over to the window to the fan. It's just a little, and then I got one of these extending reels and so I put that in there. So you know I'm sure if I need a soldering iron going or something with only two amps less than two amps of load there on a 15 amp circuit I got a one and a half amp little pump running off of it also. So I'm going to generously generously say I'm running I'm pulling four amps so I can put another 11 amps on there and not be worried. Uh, one thing I did do today, I'll bring you back over to this corner, is I brought the extension cord in from the outside so I can close the doors now on my temporary lighting system. So that's it. Thank you very much for dropping in. Uh, I hope you had a little bit of entertainment out of this anyways. All kinds of crap I got stored and scurried around. Alrighty, take it easy. Thank you. Hey, I was just cleaning up and realized I didn't show you this little box. There's all my sandpaper. I keep the granite tile on top of it. Keeps it all nice and flat. They're all individually wrapped. Uh, measuring tools, paper, calipers, little drafting squares, squares that I bought, marking gauges, the Airtas marking gauges, kind of a mess right now in here. A little geometry set in there. Uh, card scrapers and an old, old tape of my dad. And uh, uh, I guess it's a polisser. Well, that's what I'm going to call it. No, not a polisser. Some sort of roller anyways that they use. So I thought it was good to apply glue or something. And I got that at the dollar store. The Dremel and all of its accoutrements. And that is one handy little piece of equipment. It's up on the plunge base right now. That's what I was using it for last, for a router. And the bottom, safety gloves and just overflow of stash. Old knives and hunting stuff. And, uh, I think that got it all. I think you've seen it all now. Again, thank you very much. Thumbs up helps. So do likes and shares. Thanks for dropping by.